Think back to the days of Family Affair, when a certain red-headed, curly-haired, freckle-faced child graced the screen. Remember how adorable he was? Just as charming as a button. That child was none other than Johnny Whitaker, a name that still rings true today. Despite the passage of time, 61 years have now marked his journey, one filled with resilient triumphs over adversity. Johnny Whitaker's story began in Van Nuys, California, on December 13, 1959. He was the fifth child among eight siblings born to Thelma and John O. Whitaker, Sr. His father, John Sr., held the role of a Mormon junior high school teacher, contributing to the educational tapestry of his community. In his early years, Johnny's talents found their roots in the echoes of his church choir, where his singing prowess first blossomed. By the tender age of three, he had already embarked on his journey into television commercials, a mere child but with a spark that foretold his future accomplishments. The year 1965 marked a pivotal turning point as Johnny stepped onto the stage of daytime drama. Aged five, he embraced the character of Scotty Baldwin in the acclaimed series General Hospital. The same year witnessed his presence in Slattery's People, a political drama featuring Richard Crenna. Here, he assumed the role of Douglas Stix, contributing to an episode intriguingly titled, Question, Is Democracy Too Expensive This Year? It was 1966 when Johnny's cinematic voyage began, with his inaugural film appearance as Jerry Maxwell in The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming. Interestingly, this film also showcased Brian Keith as police chief Link Maddox, a foreshadowing of their future partnership on Family Affair. The camaraderie that developed between young Whitaker and Keith paved the way for a significant interview orchestrated by Keith himself with the producers of the beloved show. The spotlight truly found Johnny Whitaker with the arrival of Family Affair. CBS unveiled the show on September 12, 1966, instantly propelling the young talent into stardom's embrace. He assumed the role of Jody Davis, a six-year-old orphan whose abode graced the heights of opulent New York City living. Amid this luxurious setting, he shared the space with Uncle Bill and his fellow siblings, all under the care of Mr. Giles French, the genteel aide to Uncle Bill. This intricate family arrangement was punctuated by the character of Uncle Bill, portrayed skillfully by Brian Keith, a prosperous engineer and bachelor. Together, they navigated a sudden shift in roles, becoming surrogate parents to the trio of children left orphaned by a tragic car accident. Sissy, the oldest among them, exuded vivacious teenage spirits, while Jody, the lone male, held hands with his adorable twin sister, Buffy, brought to life by Anissa Jones. Reflecting on the show's immense popularity, Whitaker pointed out that its allure rested significantly on the charm of these two cute little kids. He maintained that the intrigue didn't center on Uncle Bill or Mr. French. Rather, the heart of the show beat with the curiosity of what unfolded in the lives of Buffy and Jody. During the run of Family Affair, Johnny Whitaker managed to grace other series with his presence. The span of his career saw guest appearances in notable shows like Bonanza in 1968, Bewitched in 1969, The Virginian also in 1969, and Green Acres in 1970. Among these ventures, his role in Bewitched emerged a tale titled Sam and the Beanstalk. Here, he took on the mantle of Jack, a character woven into a narrative where Samantha embarks on a mission to retrieve the runaway Tabitha from the realms of Jack and the Beanstalk. The year 1969 witnessed Johnny's starring role in a television movie titled The Littlest Angel. In this poignant narrative, he portrayed Michael, a young shepherd who meets a tragic fate by falling off a cliff, only to find solace in the embrace of heaven. Set against the backdrop of Christmas, The Littlest Angel graced screens on December 6, 1969, this heartwarming production was enriched by the talents of Fred Gwynn, Cab Calloway, E.G. Marshall, and Tony Randall. As the curtain fell on five seasons and a remarkable 138 episodes of Family Affair, 
CBS bid adieu with the airing of its final original episode on September 4, 1971. The conclusion of this beloved show marked a turning point for Johnny. Embarking on a new chapter, he delved into the realm of Walt Disney Films, leaving his indelible mark on five cinematic ventures. In 1973, he further cemented his versatility by stepping into the world of musicals, taking the lead in the production Tom Sawyer. Johnny's artistic journey continued to be painted with diverse hues. In 1971, an episode of Marcus Welby, M.D., beckoned him, titled Crossmatch. The following year, he graced the TV police series Adam-12 with a guest appearance. Here, he slipped into the character of Eddie Roberts, bringing life to an episode aptly named Northeast Division. Simultaneously, 1973 saw him don the role of Johnny Stewart in the Saturday morning children's show titled Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, where youthful imagination held sway. On a somber August 28, 1976, tragedy cast a dark shadow as Anissa Jones, aged 18, was discovered lifeless due to a severe drug overdose. The unfortunate event unfolded at the residence of a friend in Oceanside, California. In the aftermath, her untimely passing was officially deemed an accidental occurrence. Johnny Whitaker, who had shared the limelight with Anissa in Family Affair, was profoundly shaken by the loss of his co-star. As November of 1994 rolled around, he bared his emotions, recalling the bonds formed during their shared journey on the show. We were like brother and sister, he shared, his voice heavy with grief. Learning of her demise, he recounted how his heart seemed to plummet to his very toes. The weight of the tragedy led Johnny to a place of introspection, compelling him to pause and scrutinize the course of his own life. I've been working for the past 15 years, he mused, revealing the impetus to reassess his aspirations and the unfolding narrative of his own life. In this period of heartache, Kathy Garver, the actress who played his other TV sister, expressed a profound sense of loss in the wake of Anissa's passing. Reflecting on the circumstances, she remarked in an interview with Susan King of the Los Angeles Times, that was a real tragedy. The Lamont was underlined with a note of regret as she acknowledged the unfortunate path that Anissa had inadvertently wandered into. As the chapters of Johnny's life turned, he embarked on a different journey, two years in Portugal as a volunteer Mormon missionary. Returning to the United States, his journey took a different direction, marked by challenges in the pursuit of acting roles. Ultimately, he found his place within the halls of Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. In 1986, he emerged with a Bachelor of Arts degree in communications. In the year 1984, a chapter of new beginnings unfolded for Johnny Whitaker as he entered the bonds of matrimony with Cimbria Wright, a former talent agent hailing from Reseda, California. However, this union eventually crumbled, and by 1988, the couple's path diverged through a divorce. Fate took an unexpected turn as Cimbria later found love with none other than Johnny's closest friend, rewriting the storylines of their lives. Amid the ruins of his marriage, Johnny embarked on a journey through a deeply shadowed period of his life. Reflecting on this dark juncture, he recounted to Roger Mullen of the Fayette Phil Observer the pivotal event that acted as the catalyst for his descent into a metaphorical abyss. His divorce, he confessed, became the precipice from which he lost faith in both himself and the divine, akin to the struggles faced by Luke Skywalker in a darker narrative. Bars, smoke, marijuana, cocaine, and methamphetamine became his companions, leading to the loss of material possessions, jobs, and a company he had passionately founded, all spiraling into oblivion. In this harrowing darkness, the beacon of a family intervention penetrated the depths of Johnny's struggles, heralding a wake-up call that would change his trajectory. The impetus provided the strength to embark on a remarkable journey toward redemption. For over 18 and a half years, he traversed the path of sobriety, discovering not only the power of his resilience, 
but also a newfound passion for aiding others in their battles against substance abuse. He embraced a new role as a certified drug counselor, and presently he dedicates his efforts to guiding individuals on their journey toward recovery. This noble pursuit found its expression in the Paso por Paso Alcohol and Drug Rehabilitation Center, an embodiment of his commitment to fostering transformation. Yet, the remnants of his past behavior cast a long shadow, leading to severance from the Mormon Church. Thank you all so much for watching, and goodbye. And goodbye.